How's it going today, everybody? Eddie Kernan for Rexy Lab. Welcome to the Guitar Murray. This time, well, it's not so much sexy, but this is important. We're going to talk about truss rods, a bunch of various different kinds, and what they do, how they work, and how not to break one. There is precious little that is more horrifying than when you go just that one little turn too far and you know you've broken your truss rod. But what exactly does that mean? Well, in order to figure it out, I've got a couple examples of truss rods right here. The first one is this. It's pretty simple. What's important to note about a single action truss rod is that there is an anchor down here and then up here there will be something. It'll either be a sleeve like this that you just torque against and it'll come against something inside the neck. If you tighten this up too much, you'll actually just shred the threads. When you do that, there are a couple options. Uh, Stu Mac makes a tool that is ridiculously cost prohibitive if you're only gonna use it once. It's actually cheaper to buy a new neck. You might also have an acorn nut. This is a very Gibson kind of thing and as you can see, they both fit on this truss rod here. The threads can vary and do often. It's really, really a good idea to just do it right the first time. The next thing we have to look at, this one was a ridiculous pain. This came out of a Jackson Custom Shop base from the 80s. Now, if you look at it, it looks like a dual action truss rod, but it's not. It's a single action truss rod. If we put this wrench on here, we can see as I tighten it up, this piece right here will bow out. That is kind of what a dual action truss rod does. If we loosen it up, it just gets loose. I can pull this all the way off. That is not how a dual action truss rod works. This is a dual action truss rod. We'll get to it in a minute. What happened with this one, the person who was adjusting it kept on torquing it down and instead of ripping the threads apart, which is what happened on this one, what he did was he bent this down to where you couldn't get a wrench on it anymore and it had to be pulled out. This was a lot easier because it had a separate fretboard. We just pulled the fretboard off, pulled this out, put in dual action truss rod. Now when I say easier, don't misunderstand that. And you can watch the uh, 1988 Jackson Custom Shop base video on this channel to see just how difficult it was. This is a dual action truss rod. This is pretty much my choice. This is what I think is the best. And as with that funky Jackson truss rod, if I tighten it up, you can see that this rod bows up. That's really cool. But if I loosen or go the other way, then the rod actually goes. So that would be working in two different ways or dual action, as opposed to this one right here where this sleeve is just free floating on this rod. With this, we're actually welded here so it has no choice but to go one way or the other. When adjusting a truss rod, there are a few different ways that it might be in there and there are a couple other things that you might need to take into account. You might need to use a uh, Allen wrench. Fender uses a 3 16 pretty common. You might have either a uh, acorn nut that is standard or metric. In fact, these are all standard and metric, and you can see how many different sizes there are. You might have a metric Allen wrench. You might even have one of those little funky wheels at the bottom that you just stick a metal rod into and turn. They all have their pros and their cons. Not, none of them are any better or worse. What's really important is that you do not over tighten it. So now we're gonna actually look at a few of these things and we're gonna look at them on necks that are off of guitars to make it just a little bit easier. And let's start out with something that's fairly common, which is this. And it's basically the acorn nut, very Gibson. You can see that there are washers that are stacked in there and that's something that's pretty typical. If the truss rod isn't quite working anymore, 
then what people will oftentimes do is stack washers in there until the thing bites and actually starts working again. This can be overdone. Even though this is a washburn neck, it has a bullet truss rod, which is pretty common of uh, Fender back in the uh, 70s. So it's not bad. It's not a bad design. This is a bad design. Look at that. There's no, there's nowhere to access the truss rod. Guess what? It's right there. You know what this means? We've got to take the neck entirely off of the guitar in order to deal with it. This is no fun, especially if you've got something really, really finicky and you've got to take it on and off multiple times. Here's another one that adjusts at the heel, but the thing with this one is that you get it pretty close and then it's got a little side adjustment there for micro adjustments. This is a pretty neat feature and uh, not bad, but all things considered, I'd still rather have a dual action truss rod with adjustment right here. Now let's take a look at other places that you might actually see a truss rod adjustment on the actual instrument itself. With this Yamaha, you can see that it is a heel adjustment, but they carved out this channel for us so the truss rod will fit right in there. It kind of eliminates the problem and makes it to where I don't mind so much that it's down here. This is also heel adjusted, but it's got that little spoke wheel that I was talking about. These can look different. Uh, the things on modern Charvels and uh, EVHs are much, much larger, but they do the same exact thing. In the case of this made in the USA Tobias base, you can also see that it's adjustable at the heel. However, it has dual truss rods. With this Kubicki EX Factor, we've got something pretty unique going on. We have an adjustment that's very much like what you would see at the heel, only it's at the head. With the seven string Conklin Groove Tools base, we have two truss rods at the head. It's not hard to imagine why. Look at the size of this neck. It's massive. Sometimes, like in the case of this PVB Quad 4, you've got a graphite neck, and therefore, they decided not to put a truss rod in it at all. Quite often with nylon string guitars, there won't be an adjustment in them at all either. Although in this LePetri nylon string, there is, and you have to go in through the sound hole. That's extremely common with acoustic guitars, although they can also have a more modern adjustment up here. I've modified the way that I do a truss rod adjustment for two reasons. First one is a little tip from Dan Erlewine, who is the absolute master, all hail Dan Erlewine. And the next one is this, Rickenbacker. Rickenbacker back in the day did not have a truss rod. What they had was like this thing they called a hairpin and it was not good. You adjusted it completely different from the way you would adjust a truss rod. In fact, if you adjusted it the way you would adjust a truss rod, you're more than likely going to break it. With the 4003, we actually have a real truss rod system. In fact, we have two truss rods. And according to Rickenbacker, if you want, you can just pull them right out and put new ones in. I will do more on this base. Even though they say that you can adjust this like a truss rod, I kind of adjust it like a hairpin. And I do all of my truss rod adjustments like that. And I'll show you exactly how I do that here in just a moment. Now to get just a little bit more of an idea of what this truss rod is actually doing, I've got this really crude drawing here where in blue we have the string represented, green is the neck, brown is the body, and then red is the truss rod. As we tune up our string, it is creating tension. That tension wants to pull the neck this way. To counterbalance that, we put in a truss rod, and as we tighten it, it creates tension this way, counterbalancing the tension of the string. And that's really all there is to a truss rod. That's how it works. So, without any further ado, let me show you how I do it safely. Okay, so here we go. We're finally there, getting ready to adjust the truss rod on this Jackson five-string bass. This particular instrument was made in Indonesia. This is obviously post-fender buyout, and it doesn't resemble any kind of Jackson that I remember from back in the day. It's the very least expensive Jackson five-string that I think they 
make, maybe even ever made. Here's the problem. I've had to adjust this thing constantly. It's had fret sprout and all kinds of other stuff like that. I suspect that it's because they didn't dry the wood properly. And once again, it's having issues. It's tuned to pitch and the strings are a million miles off the fretboard. The best way to check that is with a notch straight edge. And if we look, we can see that there's all kinds of space there. It's just ridiculous. In a pinch, you can press down on the first fret and the last fret. And even then we can see that that action is really, really high. Therefore, I'm going to adjust this truss rod yet again. And hopefully this time it will stay a little bit longer. This is supposed to have a dual action truss rod. So there is a possibility that it's just loosening up on itself. I don't know. Let's find out. The first thing I'm gonna do to do this safely is I'm going to detune all the strings. Okay, all the tension is off for sure. And now we're gonna find out if this actually is a dual action truss rod. If it is, I'm not gonna be able to take the nut off. Well, you know what? got it to where it was really, really loose, and then it started getting tight again. That does mean that it is a dual action truss rod. Here's the big secret. Here's the big trick to where you don't hurt your truss rod. I'm going to over tension it with absolutely no string tension on. Then when I tune it up to pitch, I will gradually loosen the truss rod before I stop, once it's where I want it to be, I'll gently tighten it just, just a bump because if you leave it loosening, mechanically it will want to keep loosening. If you bump it back to where it's getting tight, then you should be just fine and it will uh, remain tight. Hopefully this is tight enough. We'll start tuning it right now. Okay, now it's tuned to pitch, time to take a look. That is exceptionally flat. That is straight as an arrow. Funny enough, that's a little bit of a problem. It wouldn't be for me because I like my action straight as an arrow, but I have a different technique than the guy that owns this bass. He likes there to be just a touch of relief because he just beats the living crap out of the bass. So what we're going to do is give it just a touch of relief. So I'm going to back it off just a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. And now I just give it a little push that way. Not much, just a bump. All right, time to check it one more time. And we got just a touch of relief. And hopefully it's still in intonation. Yep, that is how you safely adjust a truss rod so that you don't screw anything up. If you haven't done it before or if you don't do it often, take your time. If you've got a single action truss rod, I highly recommend that you take the thing off every now and then and coat it with some beeswax. If you got some value out of it and you made it all the way to the end, if you wouldn't mind, uh, subscribing and hitting that little notification bell it helps me out and uh you know shows me a little love so that's it and uh until next time everybody this has been eddie kernan for rexy lab making the world a better place one bass guitar at a time